particular mental orientation, <clears throat> immediate answer is racism. Racist, racism, racism. Well, it runs two ways. There's no such thing as reverse discrimination. This is discrimination against white people and against, in this case, particularly white police. And there's a reason for it, Dan. The thin blue line, once it's erased, who then will they come for? Tell me who, Dan. They're going to come for you and me, God forbid. And that's why I've taken up and armed myself. Because I am not going to sit quiet. Well, here's the problem, Dan. The cop was armed. It didn't do him any good. Because the cowardly black man who snuck up behind him shot him in the head from behind. So what good was being armed? What good would being a martial artist do you if you're living in a time of civil war like this? I, I agree with you. But I'm Obama has started a civil war in this country from the day he took office. He is drip, 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 been conducting a war against America. And a war that we have not yet seen the end of, Dan. That's the problem. Has another year and change to destroy what, whatever he has. That's, that is correct. That is how I see it. Dan, we're not alone, by the way. I know some very, very, very intelligent, successful people who see the world exactly the way we see it. He is flooding America with as many Mexicans and as many Muslims and as many Africans and as many Asians as he possibly can. And he is depositing them in largely white communities for one reason only. And that is because he is a genius community organizer. And that is what he always has been. And that is what he continues to be. And he wants to erase any community that is Republican by injecting a Democrat voting base and turning this nation into a third world cesspool for the rest of its uh, 100 years. We'll never crawl out of this for 100 years, and I'll prove it. Many people say, well, you know, if you let in all of these immigrants, eventually they're going to want to be middle class, and they're going to come to understand that socialism doesn't work, uh, the high taxes and bureaucracy works against them, and eventually they're going to become conservatives somewhat, at least fiscal conservatives. But let me give an example to the contrary. I'll make it very personal and very poignant. The Jewish immigration experience, late 1890s, early 1900s, Jews came into this country in the millions. Also, the Italians came in at the same time. But let's focus on the Jewish people. And most of them were left-wingers at the time, and 90% of the Jewish population in this country to this day is still radical left wing. I don't care if they're multimillionaires in Hollywood. I don't care if they're the biggest lawyer in town. It doesn't matter. They continue to have the same political orientation as their grandfather. And so things don't really change in two generations, do they? And so this great flood of uh, immigrants from the third world that Obama's dumping across America is meant for one reason only. That's to make America into a third world despotic hellhole for the next 200 years. It will never, ever recover from it. Ever. Ever. All of this, by the way, that I just said to you is spelled out in my next book, Government Zero. That's right. I went a few steps beyond Stop the Coming Civil War. And while I cannot offer the book to you today, it's months away from now. I mean, I asked the publisher to speed it up because things are getting so bad, but they cannot change it. You're just going to have to go online for it and pray to God you get a copy while it's still around. All right, let's go on to the callers. KFTL, is that FTL in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Gloria, what's on your mind? Hi. Well, Michael, I have had it. I am proud to say I am a white woman. My father was an immigrant. He came here legally on a boat, and it wasn't first class. He worked hard for... My mother, my sister, and I and we had a successful life. So here I am today, a senior citizen, eight grandchildren. I have had it. I am worried to death. And yes, for those of us who read and study, we know what Mr. Obama is all about. We know the Saul Alinsky. We know the rules for radicals, which, by the way, you cannot get the first edition anymore. Because it's all been changed. Well, we don't have to quote Saul Alinsky because he's been uh, uh, replaced by Barack Obama. Barack Obama's rules for radicals greatly, greatly, greatly transcend those of Saul Alinsky. Barack Obama is 
the man who wrote the textbook on rules for radicals. He is destroying the entire Western world, single-handedly destroying the Western world. Can you explain to me, for those of you who are skeptical about what I just said, why your president, your president, your great liberal president, has not destroyed ISIS? Can you explain to me why he lets them rape, murder, kidnap, trade people in slavery, hold slave houses where young girls are raped by Muslims? in ISIS, why he won't blow up their, their training camps. There's a map of their training camps all over Syria and Iraq. Why has he not ordered our military to destroy those training camps? Can anyone explain that to me? The answer is because he wants them to thrive. He wants them to rise. He wants them to take down Assad. And then what will we have? Has he thought that through? Has he thought that through? Michael, about the military. The military is so soft. We have these generals with all their medals speaking to congressmen, sounding like little robots. They and sound like little girls on medication. Exactly. They're so, called they're paper generals. The real generals were fired by Barack Obama. Four of them and one admiral who are willing to save the people in Benghazi were dismissed by Stalin in the White House. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. All right, so the newspapers, the television, by and large, the news, is the reason America's in such trouble, because they're supposed to be the fourth estate. They're supposed to keep an out-of-control government in check. Instead, they're working hand-in-glove with this oppressive regime. I'll give you another example. I read from the New York Post. Let me show you the, the headlines on New York's Daily News right now. And the day after the cop was executed, being shot in the back of the head, the headline, I swear to God, is not about that. This is why I hate coming to Dayton. Black man pulled over for making direct eye contact with Ohio police officer. So in other words, that now is bigger than the murder of the white policeman. Next story is uh, Texas teens round toddler to make room for unborn child cops. Mentally ill Georgia woman found with five kids in homeless shelter two days after disappearing. Oh, here it is. Accused cop killer unloaded his entire weapon at Texas sheriff's deputy who was pumping gas. Here's another one from the esteemed Daily News. Mexican man says his 19-inch penis is too big for him to work. A Mexican man says a 19-inch penis prohibits him from being able to work or have a relationship with a woman. Well, there's a Good Morning America story right there. That's GMA. That's tomorrow's GMA. Perhaps he should be given the Presidential Medal for free of Freedom. Let's see. Uh, remembering Wes Craven's most terrifying films. I, I don't know. what a, Virginia Killer Vester Lee. That's the... Uh, black gay man who executed the reporter. Virginia killer Vester Lee Flanagan wrote letters to pal ranting about lack of sex. Oh, his days as a male prostitute in California when life was so much better. Oh, come on. That's buried in the Daily News? The reporter? The reporter was a male prostitute in California before becoming a reporter? Hello? Hand in glove. Hand in glove. I'm not implying that all reporters in the media were once male prostitutes, but they may as well be on-air male prostitutes for what they, what they do to this country. I didn't know that. Virginia Killer Vesta Lee Flanagan wrote letters to Pal, ranting about lack of sex. Is that, you see, the problem is, is that a society failed Vesta Lee. He slipped through the cracks. He didn't have enough sex. And if only we lived in, I don't know, Sweden or Denmark, a man with this much pent-up sexual need would have turned to the government for a sex partner. They would have sent them a mail every other day, a government mail every other day. Along with the mail would come a mail in order to have him feel good and defuse the situation. You see, we failed him. The, the sick killer who shot the, the, the uh, reporter and the newsman, remember that one last week? He put out a sick sex rant. Two people in his day. And he wrote a letter about his glory days as a gay escort were behind him. He's from Oakland, California, by the way, where Black Lives Matter, I think, uh, th uh, th thrives. Vesta Lee Flanagan lamented shortly before killing two people that he was sexually frustrated. You see, to a liberal, it means that our, our society failed him. He slipped through the cracks. 
He wasn't given mental health care. The government failed him. If only we had single-payer uh, male prostitutes, uh, he wouldn't have done this. If only the government had provided him with a prostitute of whatever his orientation might be, he wouldn't have done this. So it's we society who failed uh, Vestalie Flanagan. We actually pulled the trigger on that reporter and uh, the other the newsman. We did it because we failed this uh, this man. We didn't give him the sexual release that he needed through a government-supplied male prostitute. And so there's a lot of work left to be done uh, by this administration before they leave office. A lot of work indeed. Unlimited work, as a matter of fact. This is the Savage Join Nation. Join the right Savage here. Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Attention. Attention. This is an important notification for all Savage Nation listeners. As of tomorrow, September 1st, 2015, the Savage Nation podcast will no longer be uploaded to this channel. The new podcast will be uploaded to a different channel. To continue receiving updates and daily podcasts, please go to the new YouTube channel and subscribe at www.youtube.com slash Michael Savage videos. This current channel will continue to upload videos but will focus more on the 2016 presidential candidates and their speeches. To continue receiving daily podcasts of the Savage Nation, please subscribe to the new channel at www.youtube.com slash Michael Savage videos. The link is also posted below the video for your convenience. Thank you. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm a hit blue Monday. Got to work, like a sleeve on me. Hey, welcome to The Savage Nation. We're talking about the war on white police. We're talking about the illegitimate Black Lives Matter movement. We are talking about the fact that Obama started this war on police. We are talking about the civil war that Obama has triggered with his rhetoric. We are talking about Barack Obama, Eric Holder, uh, Al Sharpton, Bill de Blasio, and their constant drip, 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 drip attacks on police, which has now led to an epidemic of killing of police and that's why we're talking about it. we got to stop this. Because I remind those of you who consider yourselves liberals, many of you listen to me and you say, you know, I listen to you, but I don't really f uh, believe, uh, you know, your philosophy is correct. But I like to have a, you know, diverse opinion. I want to hear all sides. Oh, for those of you who are good liberals out there in your nice safe houses who are above it all, and you don't really believe that it's liberalism that's causing this social unrest or this, that it's liberalism that's causing us to lose the war against the worst scourge on the planet since Adolf Hitler called ISIS. Let me give you an example of something you should pay attention to, or a thought, rather. The thin blue line, which is the police, once it is erased by Barack Obama and his minions, they will come for you. The same hordes that are shooting police will shoot you. Why do you think they're called the thin blue line for so long? Because they're the only thing we have between us and the violent criminals out there of any race. Let's be very clear about it. And so the best way to erase the thin blue line is to start a war against them and replace them with a federal police force that answers only to Al, to Al Sharpton. Never forget how powerful this street rat has become. The street rat Al Sharpton, who was always a street agitator and nothing more, has been doing the dirty work for Barack Obama for well over two years now. The street agitator Al Sharpton is the one who picked our current attorney general, Loretta Lynch. Never forget that. He is the one who told Barack Obama who to make the attorney general. If you could believe that the country is that upside down, that's how it is. It's that upside down. And it doesn't portend well for the current state of affairs, nor the future of this great nation. And so that's why I think it's very important that we talk about it. 
I referenced my book, Stop the Coming Civil War, which came out a year ago, which happens to be now available in paperback if you couldn't get one then. 